All right, Shalom Akim Shalom. Hey, Yabashim Shai, I broke a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you little amount of sisters, worshiping Yabashim Shai in spirit and in truth. All praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, that's the Heavenly Father's name, who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of the beloved Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Those are the true names of the Heavenly Father and His beloved Son. And. Those are the names you need to call on in order to be delivered in a time, this last judgment, Jacob's trouble, according to the scriptures. All right. Devon said, apostles over there, great millstone who has taught us the truth, the truth concerning the scriptures. And still to this day, our leaders are out there in the spirit of the Lord. And um, peace and mercy to you, brethren. Once again, all you out there, you know, that's participating in the truth. You know, you, 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 um. You're putting your work in. You're doing what you need to do in order to build back your nation, you know, in the spirit of the Lord. You know, the grace that and the mercy he has given unto you. And, hey, man, we finna talk about this movie, um, The Black Panther, The Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The recent movie that just came out. We finna talk about that in this lesson. And right now, right about now, me personally, um, that's my favorite movie of the year, you know. That's like this is like this is up there. I give it a ten out of ten, and I and I uh, my advice is like a must watch. You know what I mean? Um, because like I, it may be a couple spoiler alerts, so go check the movie out. Come back to the video if you want to. If you're not gonna check it out, then hey, just listen to the spiritual talk on it. But the movie shows how the southern and the northern kingdom is uh, basically reuniting. You know, you wait. Then you may say, "What is the southern and the northern kingdom?" Well, the southern and the northern kingdom of Israel is reuniting. Okay, that's what the movie depicts. All right, all right. It was well put together, of course, but it showed that the southern and northern kingdom is coming back together. And the real who is the real enemy? The one that have basically in the movie it shows. You know, it's a fictional movie, but it shows that the 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 place of Wakanda and the place of uh, the Northern Kingdom were both under attack by the same denominator. And who's that denominator? Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. Well, that's what was going on in the fictional movie, but when you look at what's going on in actual reality, life, it's the same thing. All right, the southern and the northern kingdom is being attacked. So let's talk about who's the southern and northern kingdom. Well, the 12 tribes of Israel and Judah is the Negroes, as you can see on the screen. Benjamin is the West Indians, okay, the ones in the islands. Levi is the, 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 the so-called Haitians. Now, that's the southern kingdom. Those three tribes right there make up the southern kingdom of Israel, the Negroid-looking tribes, okay? And then you have the northern kingdom of Israel, which is Simeon, is the, the so-called Dominicans. Zebulon is the Guatemala to Panama, which is the Central Americans. Uh, Ephraim is the Puerto Ricans. Manasseh is the Cubans. Naphtali is Argentina to Chile, which is southwest of South America. Um, Gad is the so-called North American Indians, which me, myself, I believe I have to be of the tribe of Gad. And if, if not Gad, then maybe Reuben, you know, but Reuben, the Seminole Indians, okay? Asher, your, your Colombians to Uruguay in South America, Issachar, the so-called Mexicans, okay? So in the, in, the, in the movie, the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, you see both of these tribes in there. I mean, I'm sorry, you see both of these kingdoms in there. All right. And the Heavenly Father had the Heavenly Father right now. What's going on is that the Heavenly Father is um, Yahweh Shema was shy. He's 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 showing you what he's doing in the earth by just making it making it into a movie for you. You see, so um, we're going to go into the history of how we broke up. And then we're going to go into how the Yahweh Shema was shy is reuniting us again. So hey, the first thing we are going to do. Is let's play this trailer, so it could so it could motivate you to go see it. All right, let's play this trailer real quick. 
Tell me how to best protect Wakanda. Without the Black Panther, Wakanda will fall. My ancestors would often say, only the most broken people can be great leaders. My enemies call me no more. They came from the water. Only superhuman strength. I need to know if Wakanda is an ally or an enemy. You can come and find out. Let our gracious response to this incursion be an olive branch. Further attempts on our resources will be considered an act of aggression and met with a much steeper response. Bring it again! Bring it again! That can't be good. He's coming. For the surface world. By bringing peace covered in it. His people. They don't call him general or king. They called him Kukul Khan. The feather serpent god. Killing him. We will risk eternal war. My mother told stories about a place like this. A protected land with people that never have to leave. That never have to change who they were. What reason do you have to reveal your secret to the world? We know what you whisper. We have lost the protector. Wakanda! Let's go! Let the fifth of our discovery stop us from doing what is right. No more. brothers um the first thing i do want to say is that of course you can't go in I'm, I'm gonna put it like this for you you can't go into like a, a burger joint you know and go up to the counter and say hey can i get an extra large pizza you know what i'm saying and i go to say that because when you go in there to watch the movie you can't be expecting that the movie is going to be uh as if the Israelites had a word to say, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, because this goes off in the scriptures. We don't have no say-so. Esau, Esau is behind this movie, and it's, it's not being orchestrated under the truth. So you're going to see how they lift up the woman. You're going to see, you know what I'm saying, a lot of things that's just off. That's all in there. That's why I say you can't go to a burger joint asking for pizza. Esau ain't going to give you that, that full smacked out, raw truth of you know he gonna throw his bull his bull crap in there but if you go in the movie you you look past that you start seeing the spirituality see i had a problem when i first seen um uh black adam i went in there and i and i, I was noticing i was more focused on the, the crap they put in there versus what the message was so then i had to go back and re-watch the movie and then i was able to re-see everything for what it was so I, I encourage you when you go, if you go check it out, go in there with your spiritual eye and, and use your spiritualness to look over that you're seeing a woman do all these different moves and all that, you know, look at it spiritual, you see, now check it out though, here it is, the creator of the movie is, his name is Ryan Coogler, right, let me tell you, let me show you what happened to Ryan Coogler just going back to about, uh, Eight months ago, when he was in the middle of directing the movie uh, Wakanda Forever, this happened to him. And this is going to tie into the lesson on how 
You know, the enemy is really the this, this self-proclaimed white man who was Esau Edom, according to the Bible. Let's play this real quick. Now to a troubling story involving one of America's most successful filmmakers. Ryan Coogler is best known as the director of films like Black Panther and Fruitvale Station. But in January, he found himself being handcuffed at a Bank of America in Atlanta. It turns out he was falsely detained after a teller mistook him for a bank robber. Bank of America has apologized. Mololengi has more. Minutes after passing a note to a bank teller asking her to be discreet over a money withdrawal, filmmaker Ryan Coogler is approached by police. Hey, sir. Hey, man. Come here, favor, man. Come this way. Whoa, whoa, what's going on, man? Both of the officers draw their weapons before placing handcuffs on a surprised Coogler. They were there responding to a possible bank robbery in progress. Coogler was in a Bank of America branch in Atlanta where he's been filming the sequel to Black Panther. According to the police report, Coogler passed a withdrawal slip to a bank teller with a note written on the back asking her to be discreet when handing him $12,000 in cash. After being cuffed, Coogler was escorted to a squad car. If you just run my name, you understand why you should take me off these cuffs. C-O-O-G-O-E-R, just put it in Google. From the back seat of the squad car, Coogler explains to police he was trying not to call attention to himself in withdrawing such a large amount of cash. If I don't write down on a note how much I want out, and then I don't want it ran through the money counter right there at the desk, the whole bank ends up looking at me. Coogler was uncuffed minutes later. CBS News reached out to Bank of America and didn't hear back, but a spokesperson told Variety, we deeply regret that this incident occurred. It never should have happened and we have apologized to Mr. Coogler. Through a rep, Coogler told CBS News, this situation should never have happened. However, Bank of America worked with me and addressed it to my satisfaction, and we have moved on. For CBS Mornings, Mola Lange. All right, brothers and sisters, you, um, now to a troubling. You see how the man was, <laughs> the man was persecuted, man. The man was persecuted in, Really, when you, the, the bank teller said that uh, the way he did it, that's the reason why she she arrested. I mean, she called the police and all that. But all she had to simply do was run his name and see if if the information matched. But no, she jumped the gun. She jumped straight to he's robbing a bank, which ain't nobody trying to rob a bank in this day and t this day and age. It doesn't go back to to none of that. It goes back to. It goes back to the curses of the Heavenly Father that he put on us. It goes back to the hatred that the society have towards the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's what it goes back to. He has a, We have a stigma on us. You know? That's what's wrong. We have a stigma on us. So the, the creator of the Black Panther was uh, arrested falsely. And all they said was, sorry. I'm sorry here. All Esau has to do is say sorry and... and, and he expect everybody to just forgive him. He could just say sorry every time. You know? But hey, nonetheless, it goes back to the curses that the Heavenly Father put on us. Matter of fact, let's read. I got it right here on my phone because I didn't have this queued up, but uh, we'll read it straight from my phone. It's Deuteronomy 28 and 15. It says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses should come upon thee and overtake thee. You see, so, and when you read down to verse 68, we know that that's the list of curses the Lord placed on the uh, 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 on the Negro, Latino, and Native American for breaking the statute laws and the commandments. And Ryan Coogler, even though he's a, 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 a multi-millionaire, he just created the movie Wakanda Forever, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Black Panther series is the number one selling series uh, uh, amongst African-American um, uh, like superhero movies or something of the sort. I forget how the information goes, but he's like, it's number one in Marvel or something. I believe maybe Marvel. And nonetheless, regardless of all his accomplishments, he slapped in cuffs and in, 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 in profiled, racially profiled. Was it his his account information, his ID? None of that was checked. It's just straight up, he robbing the bank. You see? And you find out, when you watch this movie Wakanda Forever, you find out that Esau was the reason why uh, the Wakandans and the, 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 um, 
the people of the water, which was the northern kingdom, what I believe his name was Kuku Khan. The reason why they were fighting is because Esau eat him. That's the reason why they was fighting. You know, he was the one that caused them to fight in the movie. But they, you know, of course they didn't see it and you know, but hey, when you look up the word reunite, if you ever never if you ever if you have not ever looked up the word reunite, you know it's a compound word, re meaning again. And the word unite, if you ever look up unite, it means to make into one. One you see? So the Negro Latinos, the Negroes, the Latinos and the indigenous tribes are becoming one again. Because right now, if you come to California, you go to Los Angeles, you see that the Southern and Northern Kingdom, you know, they, they live amongst each other, but they're not united with each other. And they live blocks within each other. And that's everywhere you go, though. Not just in Cali, but all where you brethren are at. You see the southern and northern kingdom, they living amongst each other, but they're not united with each other. The only spark that you see of reuniting or becoming one again is the brethren you see in the world. That's that's back in the spirit of Yah Bashem El Shai, man. You know? And this is the all the, the, this is the movie of the Lord. This is the true movie of the Lord. And just as that movie showed you, we re, we was uh uniting. Um, that's what's happening right here in actual life. And I thank y'all by Shemel Shai for it. That's why I said that's one of my that's one of my um that's one of my favorite movies right now because I mean what's topping seeing the southern and the northern kingdom come together? It had the spiritual power in it. You know? It it, it was just it's hot, it's too hot, man. I, I man, I gotta go see it again. I'm gonna see it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I loved it, man. All right? I love the... Uh, in the movie... I'm sorry. We're going to go right into the scriptures. In the movie, it shows you the love that we're supposed to have for each other. And, and it just... It was just admirable. Let's go right here to Kings. Let's talk about how the Heavenly Father... Um, let's talk about how we was broke up. We got to go into how we were broken up. The Southern and the Northern Kingdom. All right? You Negroes were separated. You Negroid-looking tribes were separated from the so-called um indigenous tribes now this is a uh, first kings it goes all the way back to when king solomon was uh living all right in the book of kings it says first kings 11 and 1 it says and we're gonna jump around because i don't want to be here too long it's the first kings 11 and 1 you can read the chapter for yourself it says but the king it says but king solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters of pharaoh Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You should not go in to them, neither shall they come in to you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. So our king at the time, he, he started going off. He started breaking the laws of the Heavenly Father. And he clave to them in love. So there was a punishment that came to it. Now we're going to jump down to verse 6, 26, 11 and 26. And before you get to verse 26, it tell you how the Lord basically rose up enemies against Solomon for doing it. Now when you get to verse 26, it starts to get into, what, into the separation. It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraite of Zeroda, Solomon's servant, whose mother name was Zura, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. So then the heavenly father put the spirit on Jeroboam, which would be the king of the northern kingdom, the first king over the northern kingdom. Just like when you watch the movie, the guy Kuku Khan basically represents the king over the northern kingdom. You know, that's what he represented. Now, um, the Lord put a, a spirit on him to come against Solomon because Solomon, it was all a part of Solomon's punishment. It says, and this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. And the men of Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious. He made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. So even... Even Solomon, uh, you know, 
made Jeroboam the head over the, the charge of the house of, of Joseph, which represents all the northern kingdom. You see? So, it goes on to say, And it came to pass at the time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Sholoite, found him in the way, and he clad him with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. So then now you're figuring out what happened in the story. So Jeroboam was in the field by himself, and the prophet Ahijah met him. It says, And Ahijah caught him, I'm sorry, and Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it into 12 pieces. So Ahijah grabbed him, ripped his garment into 12 pieces, and each piece represented the 12 tribes, one of the tribes. It says, And he said unto Jeroboam, Take thee 10 pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the power of Israel, behold, I will rend unto the I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and he gave ten tribes to thee. So it says, and will give ten tribes to thee. I'm sorry. So that's where it goes back to. A prophecy that Ahijah uh told Jeroboam from the Heavenly Father. He caught him, ripped his, his garment to twelve pieces, gave uh, uh gave him ten. And that represented the northern kingdom. Okay? And uh, the Lord, like he said, and the Hydra caught the new garment that was on him and rent it into 12 pieces. And he said, Jeroboam, take thee 10 pieces. For thus saith the Lord, this is all the doings of the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. So that's what happened. He ripped, he ripped this into two. All right, so the southern kingdom stayed amongst the throne of King David, and that would be Judah and uh, and Benjamin. But remember, at the time Levi, he was scattered throughout all tribes, you know. So when the scriptures would talk to you, sometimes it would um, it would it would like it ain't that it leaving out Levi, but you have to understand the story. Levi, he didn't give a portion. He didn't. He wasn't given a portion of land. But he was given a suburbs amongst all the tribes so he could be a priest amongst all of us, all 12 of us. So when the scriptures talk, you got to understand the, the, uh, the, what had happened, the history of it. You see, it says, but he, but uh, let's read verse 32. It says, but he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which he have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. So David was left with the southern kingdom. All right, that's what it means by uh, uh, one tribe. All right, Judah. He was left with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay. Now, let me see. Now let's jump to verse. Let's jump to the. We're gonna jump one, one chapter over, and we're gonna jump around. Like I said, we're getting straight to the points. So now we've seen that the Lord is the reason why we were split. You know. And it was because of our wickedness. It just goes back to all Israel's wickedness. Okay? But the, the straw that broke the camel back was when Solomon went off. And that was all according to the Lord's doings. All right? It's, uh, this for, now, once that happened, well, you, you read the next chapter over. Read the whole chapter for yourself. But I'm going to jump down to the point that I wanted. And that's 1 Kings 12 and 19. It says, So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. So since that happened, on to this very day, this very second I'm talking to you, the southern and the northern kingdom fight against each other. They war against each other. And it's always the mediator or the instigator. It's always the self-proclaimed white man. He's always the one that's somehow getting us to fight each other. He used gang banging. He pushed and promoted gang banging through rap and TV to make us fight against each other. You know? He used the jail system. When you go into the, 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 the uh, correctional facility system or the, that industry, you, have, you go in there. If you've ever been in there, you have the southern kingdom on one side, the Negroid-looking tribes, and then you have the northern kingdom, the indigenous-looking tribes, the Latinos and natives, you know? And you have them separate. But then you have the warding. Like, like I said, it's always a mediator. It's always a... Uh, a, a I would say a wicked mediator. It's always an instigator. Here it is. You got the warden of the of the of the um the 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 the, the jail. 
and he's the one that's keeping the southern and northern kingdom separated and all of that. But see, now that the spirit of Yahweh Shemuel Shai is back, the brethren that you see on them corners, it's just not Negroes. All right, it's just not just Latinos. It's both of us together. And now, and over here in the spirit of Yahweh Shemuel Shai over here in Great Millstone, Los Angeles, I hey, I got to experience that like it's crazy. Because we have half of the camp, um, um, half of the camp is is Northern Kingdom. It ain't just one or two or three. Nah, <laughs> like, you know, them brothers is in the 20s or something or, you know, they just as much as their Southern Kingdom or um, brethren that look Southern Kingdom because some of the brethren that look Southern Kingdom is Northern Kingdom. But just for face value, um, when you look at the brethren, it's half and half, you know what I mean? And them brethren are out there teaching in the spirit of Yahweh Shemel Shai in Spanish. And we talk to them brothers and we reunite with them brothers and, hey, you know what I mean? We brothers again. You see? Very beautiful, man. Very beautiful. So the Lord was the one that split it up. And still to this day, the, 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 the kingdoms is fighting against each other. But the Lord is, is ending that using his prophets. He's ending it. So let's jump to Ezekiel 37. I'm going to jump around here. I'm going to jump around in here. This is Ezekiel because now we're reuniting again. We're becoming one again. It's Ezekiel 37 and 1. This is all the prophecies. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones. It says, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So now Ezekiel is getting the vision that there was a valley was full of bones. And the Lord told Ezekiel to prophesy unto the bones. It says, Thus saith the Lord power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. So now, um, what that was representing as we go down and, and the scripture is going to tell you, that's talking about the house of Israel. We was those dry bones. Because we are in a we we fell into our dead state. We don't know who we are right now. Our people don't know who they are. We don't know who the heavenly Father is. Most importantly, in His beloved Son. So now we become dry bones in a valley, man. And even King David, remember Psalms twenty three. King David stated that um, though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, that's over here in America. In all, everywhere we scattered in these nations. It's nothing but death that, that lies around the corner for us in these valleys. But now, but jumping back, it said to breathe into these bones and ye shall live. So now that the spirit of Yahweh Shimon Shah is back in us, you see us living again. The Negro Latino Native American returning back to their God and practicing the customs of their forefathers, which was lost and beaten out of us. And that's the scripture in Revelations 11. All right. Revelations 11, 10, it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. That's talking about all you nations that have seen the Negro, Latino, Native American be conquered by the self-proclaimed white man. It says, And make merry. Y'all did nothing but, you know, just been, been happy, living, living rich and everything off of, our, off of our slavery. It says, And shall send them gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell in the earth. So one of the folds of this understanding is that the two prophets are the southern and the northern kingdom. You see? When we were, when we, remember under King Solomon, right? Starting with his father, King David, we had these nations in check under us. You know? We had them in check under us. But now that we fell into our dead estate, we, you know, we fell into being them dry bones. These two nations are making merry and rejoicing over us because they conquered us. They got over us. They got over on us. So they sending gifts. They are rich, making each other rich with their business. You know, and they're happy because once upon a time we had them and we're going to get you again. <laughs> That's the thing. We're going to get you again according to prophecy. And verse 11 says, and after three days and a half. 
The spirit of life entered in onto them and they stood upon their feet. And the great fear fell upon them, which saw them. So remember the scripture said in Ezekiel that the Lord was going to breathe into us and we're going to live again. And then Revelations 11 and 11 said, after three days and a half, the spirit of life of the Most High entered into them. That was that breath that Ezekiel seen. And now we're calling ourselves Israelites again. You know, Ban Yasha'Allah, sons of Israel. Okay? And it says, we stood upon our feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. What we're doing is causing the, the heathen, starting with the self-proclaimed white man, to fear greatly. That's the reason why you don't see the Israelites on the forefront. You know? And the ones you do see that's rearing their ugly heads, they don't got the 100% truth for this thing. You don't see great millstone because we keeping it raw and rugged, straight in your face with this truth. You know? Straight in your face with this truth. Slocky, hold on real quick, brother. Slocky, something real important came up. Slocky. Hey, Shalom, Akim, Shalom, I'm Slack. <sighs> Forgive me. Man, I forgot to take my trash out, man. You know how that go. And the trash man is right there. But I had to run, so forgive me. I'm, uh, I got to calm my heart <clears throat> my heart rate down. But hey, um, yeah, jumping back, though. So the spirit, <sighs> the spirit of Yabba Shemel Shai. Excuse me, excuse me, brothers. <laughs> All right, it says, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So the Spirit of the Lord is back in us, and Esau, he fears what he see. And that's the reason why you don't see great millstone in the forefront, you know, because we're going to tell the truth, all right? So even dealing with this guy, Ron, Ronald, what is his last name, Daltley or something like that, Dalton, the guy who made Hebrews to Negroes documentary, his documentary ain't, it's not accurate, you know? His documentary is not according to the 100% truth of what the scriptures say, all right? It has some enlightenment in there, but nah. The real truth is found over here at Great Millstone. And when you listen to us, we do, hey, we in these scriptures like you see me today, breaking these things down for you. So back in Ezekiel, back in Ezekiel, we're going to jump down to verse 10 here. It says, uh, Ezekiel 37 and 10, it says, So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came in, came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. Remember in Revelation 11, it told you they should stand upon their feet. It's the same thing. So Ezekiel seen what John seen, okay? And that's us today, right now, in the spirit of Yahbashim al Shah, returning back to him, having lost who we were. You see? It says, an exceeding great army. Then said he unto me, son of man, these bones, and we now we're becoming an exceeding great army for the Lord. You know? So that Ronald Dal Dalton um, documentary did nothing but help the cost of prophecy. <laughs> That's it. All right? It says, then said, then he said unto me, and also, and also this movie is it, just helping the prophecy. It's aiding and helping prophecy of the southern and northern kingdom, giving you that spark of what, what the truth is, you know? And that's why this movie is killing stuff. It's, ki it's dope. It says, he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. And you can't tell me an Israelite doesn't walk around America hopeless. Because, yes, he does. Almost everybody is hopeless. Every time you see Jake, they just hopeless, man. They only thinking to themselves what they need to do for this life and, 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 and 
what's going on right this right right before their eyes this second? They're not looking forward to the Heavenly Father. You know? Man, but now, but like 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 the Ezekiel is saying, our hope is not lost. Our hope is back in Yah Bashimel Shai, man. I praise to Yah Bashimel Shai that we that he has us back in hope. It says we are cut off of our parts. Verse 14 says, I'm jumping here, I'm jumping here. It says, It shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, You're gonna know that the most high did this. Y'all about Shemel said, This is the working of the Lord. All right, and you brethren, that's uh, cause I grew up around, I grew up around the Southern Kingdom, you know, I grew up around Southern Kingdom, but you brethren, that's from the Northern Kingdom, you know, I, I basically know all about Southern Kingdom, but you brethren, that's in the Northern Kingdom, you know, getting to know the Northern Kingdom brother and how they do things, it's beautiful. I'm a straight up, I want to say that, it, it's it's like it, it, it's it's amazing, man. They do things different, but it's one is still the same. The way they think and do things is one. I mean, it's different, but it's one and still in the same of us. It's all beautiful, you know. So yeah, man, shit, hey. Instead of saying like a, like a lot of Southern Kingdom, they're like them. them it's them. them they say Mexicans, you know what I mean? They say them them fucking Mexicans. I, I've heard that from Jake. I've had to correct Jake at the job because he just was too a little bit too outspoken. You know what I mean? I had to tell him like, man, I I, I ain't really feeling that, man. You know. He was just too outspoken, but that goes back to the curses. And, and, and the Southern Kingdom doesn't just do that to the Northern Kingdom, but the Northern Kingdom, you do it to the Southern Kingdom too. You know, the Negros, the Mayates, and, you know, you don't want to treat your, you don't want to treat the Southern Kingdom like your brother. You don't believe he your people. But, you know, that's just the curse of this thing. You know? But now... All of that is stopping, man. All of that is stopping. And now, like you just heard me commend the Northern Kingdom brothers, you know, on how they do things. And more importantly, most importantly, the Northern Kingdom brothers believe in Yahweh Shemel and Shai, man. You know? As you can clearly see, man. All right? Matter of fact, I got a, I got a nice little video for you. As soon as we get past these couple little scriptures here. It says, Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Ezekiel 37 and 15 now. Now, the, the title of the chapter is, is called The Reunion of Judah and Israel. Because, yes, we're in a reunion right now. <laughs> Brothers, we are in a reunion. How does it feel? You know what I'm saying? How does it feel straight up? You know? We're in a reunion with your brothers right now this second. It says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take the one stick. Oh, there goes that. Remember we looked up you, United earlier, earlier? It means one. The word United means one. What the hell? There goes that one again. It says, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, which is the 12 tribes chart you see that us brethren have out there. All these tribes. Put all of them on there on one stick. It says, um, it says, and join them one to another into one stick. In the movie Wakanda Forever, <laughs> just to make a little humor in there, the movie shows you that. And I'm gonna spoil alert for you. For um um the the Northern Kingdom, the last the last scene, really, that it showed him, his words, them words was powerful, man. Those words were so powerful, I'm finna tell you what, what he said. The, he was in, he was sitting on his throne, and his, his one of his uh, ladies came in. Maybe she's like a queen of some sort. She came in, she told him she didn't like the way he, he yielded or need to, the, to, the, to, to Wakanda, basically making peace. She didn't like it, you know? Because they're they're strong, they don't do that. That's not in their history or their customs to kneel to anybody. 
right? And you know he wrote that king of the Northern Kingdom king said, you know what he said? It was it was dope. He said he told her, "Look, man, just chill out because Wakanda, they're going to they're going to have to fight against the surface world. And all the surface world is going to come against them." Now, the surface world, what he was saying was Esau. All the Esau are going to come against the Wakandans as you know from part 1. That Esau was the ones trying to, they trying to get into Wakanda to get the, the vibranium. And part two is showing you the same thing. They're trying to get the vibranium. You know? So, he says that, um, he says that Wakanda one day is going to come that Wakanda going to have to fight the surface world. And when they've had to fight all these nations coming against them, then Wakanda going to call us. And he was talking about himself to that woman. He said, then Wakanda is going to call us and they're going to need us. So basically, when you read, when you're watching the movie, you're, if you know about the Northern Kingdom dude, he wanted to go up there and jack Esau up. But Wakanda didn't want to do that. You know? So they got into a war with each other over that. But now the king saying, look, when that day come, when the surface world, because I tried to tell the Wakandas that them goddamn Edomites saying, you never trust your enemy, so to speak, for you. You know? I tried to tell them. So when they come against Wakanda, they're going to be calling us. And then he will have, then he will have what he said, what he even came to the Wakandans for in the first place. He would then still have it. You see? So, man, it's it just like, now, that's what it is with us. The, the Northern Kingdom, the Southern Kingdom, and the Spirit of Yahweh Shemesh, are we coming together to fight against our enemy? But we're not fighting against him like he's fighting us. We're fighting against him with our God now. You know? Because, like they said, in the, in the, in the, uh, like he was saying, the surface world is coming. This place hates us. They've used us. We can't even return to our heritage. You get persecuted um, when you... As you see Kyrie Irving and Kanye West, and they don't even have the full truth, but you get persecuted for trying to just stand up for who you are. Trying to figure out knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you get persecuted. Trying to separate, make businesses for yourself, trying to grow a family. You know, trying to live in peace, you get persecuted by the surface world or by the Edomites. So now, the spirit of Yahweh Shemel Shai, like we read in Ezekiel, it came back into us. And we on them corners with the 12 tribes chart in front of us and, and teaching, the, teaching about our Lord and telling Jake to return and seeking out the elect. It's happening, man. You know? So, like we, like we read, we broke up. We read in Kings. We broke up. Ezekiel said we're going to come together. Right? Now, let's read. Um, and we read a precept in Revelations that said, Esau's gonna fear it. <clears throat> Excuse me, fear it. Now let's run. Now let's jump to Isaiah 11 and, and um 13. It says, "The envy also of Edom, I'm sorry, <laughs> the envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. That's where we're moving it to. All right? And no more. Oh, oh, that's not my brother, or he just a uh, a mayate, or that's just a, 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 a so-called Mexican. You know? Because that's how the southern kingdom would just put all the northern kingdom, they all Mexicans. You know? But no more none of that. No more all that, none of that stuff. Alright? And even amongst each other. Here it is. Um, even amongst the southern kingdom, you find them fighting. And even amongst the northern kingdom, there's, inner, there's inward fighting. All fighting is going to stop. And we're going to love our neighbor as ourself as it is commanded of us. You see? So let's get to that, uh, let's get to this, um, this juicy, I mean, this little, you know, this little hidden nugget that I seen the brother over there in London had put it up. The spirit, you know, which the, uh, the spirit of Yabba Shemel Shai had jumped on me. I used to do a lot of editing, you know, from like, uh, 2012 to about 2000 and, um, maybe 18. You know, for the spirit of Yabba Shemel Shai to edit all type of videos and do all type of editing and, you know, have all them, you know, videos like that. And this is one of them, the spirit of Yabba Shemel Shai had me put, 
together. All praise y'all about Shemal Shai. And, you know, when you put it together, you don't know the power of it until you start seeing it years later. Let's see the power of this video right here. Isaiah 11 and 13, and Judah shall not fix Ephraim. Isaiah 11 and 13, Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Isaiah 11 and 13, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Isaías 11 y 13, Ephraim no tendrá envidia de Judá. Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Ephraim no tendrá envidia de Judá. But the, the Lord is not gathering brothers from the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, so-called Negroes and Latinos, and now we're all coming back together. Now by Shemel Shai is bringing the tribes back together. You know, the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom, Tabernacle David. All right, Shalom, brothers, Ezekiel 37 chapter, we're coming back together. The Negroes, the Latinos, the Native Americans, it's all being brought back together through the spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Los negros, los latinos, y los nativos americanos, el electo, son nuestros hermanos. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is gathering his elect from all four corners of the planet, bringing together once again in unity. Shalom. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech right. and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Yeah. We send right to you niggas and lands, but we speak the same thing you speak. Right. And you can't say that Spanish, uh, no English, I mean, uh, yeah, no English. You can't say that no more, man. Because we got Spanish service right across the street over there. Right. Uh, tuvimos un incidente la otra noche, man. Un idiota viene en Africana, ustedes con ellos son cochos, man. Porque andan con los negros, man. You fucking idiot, man. El Señor te va a matar, man, por no saber que somos hermanos. Si quieres hablar esa mierda, que el hombre negro no es nuestro hermano, man. Un hombre negro es tu salvador, man. Pinche idiota, por eso necesita muerte, man. So-called black people, so-called uh, Puerto Ricans, Hispanic, and the Native American Indian people that are waking up to the fact that they're Israelites. So it's starting to, to uh, 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 it's, it's starting to, right, to, to uh, expand and, 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 and become big. Yeah. All right, brothers and sisters, you see it? Hey, I'll praise y'all by Shemel Shai because this is the camp that I'm that I'm that I'm in. I remember recording all of that. You know, I had to record all those brothers, and I had to put it all together. And, and I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but y'all by Shemel Shai had me do it. And it's because of the purpose that it's the purpose for the truth. It's all for y'all by Shemel Shai. That's what this is for, man. It's for my. This is for the brethren. This is for this, this is for the truth. For the Lord. And as you can see, um, you had Spanish speaking involved in brother. I don't even know some of them words. I don't know what that brother said, but I know he said the right thing, you know, still to this day, you know, because I don't speak Spanish. But you had the Spanish involved in there. And I shared the video a little earlier of the brother Araya Dob from the tribe of Iskar. The brother right here, that's the spirit. I'm talking about him. He pops on the screen. This brother right here, <laughs> brother just did a video um, speaking in Spanish, teaching the Paleo Hebrew. Come on, man. Can't make this up, and that's a very beautiful brother, man. You know what I mean? I love this brother right here. But you see, brethren, as well, um, uh, that that you didn't see just uh, Latino. You seen you seen all the tribes right here: Issachar, Gad, Reuben, uh, uh, Zebulon, Judah. You see, you seen them all right there. And that's what Yahweh Shemel Shai is doing, man. He's uh, he's re reuniting us. And then you got you got brethren that look like Southern Kingdom, <laughs> like this brother, for instance, the brother the um, the brother Dawada right here. You know, you might hey, the elder brother Dawada. You know that brother been doing this thing. But that brother that brother speak the Spanish. But when I'm with that brother, they think we two two Negroes. You know. 
But <clears throat> that's the head brother of the of the of the, of the northern kingdom over here. Um, but. Man, bro, it's just it's it's a beautiful thing to be reunited, <laughs> and it feels so good, you know. And, and the Most High gonna continue to reunite us, all right. This is Hosea one and ten. It says, "Yet the children of Israel should be as it says. Yet the number of the children of Israel should be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it should come to pass that in a place where it was sent unto them, you are not the people. There should be said unto them." You are the sons of the living God. There it go. That's the prophecy. Over here in America, we lost who we were. All right? Even the northern kingdom that was here before the Negroes got here, um, they lost their self from coming over here, leaving the, leaving, leaving the Middle East. They was over here since the 7th century, right, right before the Babylonians came into rulership. They, they left about two, maybe 200 years before the Babylonians came into rulership, the Northern Kingdom left the Middle East and came to the Americas. And that's the reason why they were here when Christopher Columbus got here. Okay? They've been here. They lost their self over here. In the Southern Kingdom, we seen in slavery, they they um their inheritance got beat out of them. And Kuta Kinte is the prime example of that. So the place where it was said, you are not my people. And even you see with Nick Cannon and Kanye and Kyrie, uh, they're saying that we're not the people off of their examples. Them stand, saying a little bit and Esau coming with anti-Semitism stuff. That's saying that we're not the people. That's a part of that. It says, there should be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. You are the sons of the living God over here in America. We hold the Passover in our land of our enemies. And it's a portion in the Passover where you say your name and your tribe and that you're a son of Israel. So now that's being established again. All right. And we on your corners proclaiming it to all the public. We are the sons of Yahweh Shemel Shai, the sons of God. We are Yasha Allah, the Israelites, the Negro Latino Native American descendants. That's what we're saying. As soon as we start the less our, our, our uh, street ministries. It says, then shall the children of Judah, the southern kingdom, and the children of Israel be gathered together, united, one, and appoint themselves one head. And we found through our, King David is our king. That's the one head. All right? King David is our king. And we've, we've heard uh, uh, um, that where the truth came in one west, when it came out, the truth came out of one west, who first was established and who was who? We've heard it from our apostles and elders. You know? All right? So King David, which we believe to be King Masha, okay? He's already come. We already appointed ourselves one head. It's there. It says, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. And we finna get delivered out of America. All right? And great gonna be the day of Jezreel, which means... Seed of the God. Great should be our day. It's going to be beautiful, man. You know? And this movie, this movie right here, it shows that. Straight up, it shows that. You know? It shows that. It shows how, it shows all of that. So, yeah, man, through the spirit and power of y'all, by Shema, I was shy, man. I hope that was edifying, man. Um, Like I said, I give the movie a 10 out of 10. And I enjoyed seeing the Southern and Northern Kingdom, uh, you know, basically... Have that sense of uniting. But in the movie, it show you that Esau was causing them to fight. It was Esau that was causing them to fight, man. It's because of Esau. You know? But, hey, the end was that they're going to reunite, man. Hey, so, hey, through the spirit of power, y'all, by Shemar Shai, and throw out of all you Akim that's, that, uh, that passed by, and go check the movie out and enjoy it.